Hi again everyone, it's Pastor John here at Napanee Baptist Church. It's Thursday, March the 25th. It's good to be with you. I hope you're doing well. We're doing a series in the book of John. And when, during these visits, we usually just have a, a little Bible study and then a time of prayer and we commit our day to the Lord. And we're doing this, I realized we have been doing this now for almost a year. I think we started in April of last year when the uh, pandemic first started and we were forced into lockdown. Uh, we started these daily visits during the work week and I hope they've been a blessing to you. I hope you've been encouraged. That was the reason why we started doing this so we couldn't, because we couldn't get together during the week or have personal visits. I started doing this online. So I, I hope these have been uh, helpful and meaningful, and I hope that you're encouraged during this very difficult time that we're going through. So if you can turn to the book of John, we're doing our series in the New Testament. Uh, like I've said, one week we do it in John, and then the next week we do it in the Old Testament in Proverbs. So if you can turn to John chapter 16, starting with verse 16 to the end of the chapter. Let's read together. Jesus went on to say, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. At this time some of the disciples said to one another, what does he mean by saying, in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me, and because I am going to the Father? They kept asking, what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he is saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, Are you asking one another what I meant when I said, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? Verse 20, Verily, verily, I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born unto the world. Verse 22, So with you, now is your time of grief. But I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. In that day you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Verse 25, Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Verse 29, Then Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things, and that you don't, do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Verse 31, Do you now believe? Jesus replied, A time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things, so that in me, in me, you may have peace in this world. You will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And what I'm going to focus in on uh, as I look at this passage and just share a few things with you is this last part. And this is, talk about an encouragement, this is, a, uh, a wonderful affirmation and a, a wonderful 
pick me up, really. Verse 33, the last verse, it says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. Now that's an understatement <laughs> because in this world we have trouble. Trouble upon trouble. And that is something we all know. And trouble takes many different forms and many different types. And in this life we have trouble. And we're going through trouble right now with this pandemic and there's personal problems and even in the church there are church problems, relational problems, family problems, work problems, all sorts of trouble. But then we have this great encouragement from Jesus. He wants us to have peace and he says that we can have peace. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. And then at the end of verse 33, he says, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Yes, in this world we will have trouble, but take heart, Jesus has overcome the world. He has overcome those things that could take us down and take us away and defeat us. We can have victory in Jesus because he has overcome the world and especially through his death and resurrection. He is the victor. He is the con conquering king. He has overcome not just the world in a general sense, but he has overcome all of our problems and our troubles. No trouble can take us away from him. And in Romans chapter 8, uh, Paul talks about nothing in all the world can separate us from the love of God. No trouble, no matter what it is, can really defeat us and take that peace that Jesus gives away from us. We can have peace in spite of our troubles and we can take heart. Why? Because Jesus has overcome the world and he's overcome all of our troubles all of our problems so may you take heart today and may you be encouraged and may you keep looking up and trusting our lord and our savior so let's just pray and commit our day to him father we thank you and we praise you that you are the father of all you are our lord you have sent jesus our savior to overcome the world we thank you that we have a peace that passes all understanding. And you are the God of all comfort. And Jesus will overcome no matter what happens in our lives and no matter what life throws at us. He has overcome the world and that's the reason we can take heart. So Lord, we pray that you would meet each need of everyone who's watching today. Draw close to us, renew us, revive us, give us a fresh sense of what we have in you and help us to keep being faithful to you and to keep looking to you and not to allow the troubles of this life to overcome us. And so we give you this day, we thank you for it, in the precious name of Jesus we pray, amen and amen. Take care. God bless you, and we'll see you on Friday. Bye-bye.